So there are all sorts of products on the market to clean a crankcase, but if you've been around the shop a while, you've heard it many times that all you need to use is some automatic transmission fluid to free up lifters, to clean the crankcase, that it is the best product on the market. Now what we're going to do today is test this theory in several different engines, and each one of these engines will serve a specific purpose to determine whether or not automatic transmission is effective at cleaning a crankcase. One of the engines is going to have a see-through panel on the side of the engine so we can watch the automatic transmission fluid splashing around and we can see whether or not the fluid changes colors quickly. And then we're going to go ahead and filter that oil to see if there's any sort of contamination that it's removed. We're also going to use another engine that will take a look at the cylinder wall. We're going to run it for a solid hour, sometimes under load and sometimes not to see how it performs. Anyway, we've got quite a few different tests to run with this automatic transmission fluid, so let's go ahead and get the project underway. Okay, I've changed the oil twice in this engine, so what I'm gonna do now is run this engine for about five to 10 minutes, and then afterwards, let it cool off, do a compression test, so we have a good baseline to work with. The type of transmission fluid I'll be using is the Havlin Synthetic Dexron 6. What exactly is in it? Highly refined and mineral oil, between 70 and 99%. The safety data sheet does not provide a cast number. Okay, according to the safety data sheet, the boiling point is 599 degrees Fahrenheit or 315 degrees Celsius. So automatic transmission fluid is designed to take a lot of heat. There isn't any information regarding the flammability of the automatic transmission fluid. So anytime we test products inside of an engine, I'd like to use the lubricity test to determine how much lubricity the product has. So we'll be comparing automatic transmission fluid, the 10W30 motor oil, to see the difference between the two. So the way this works is I'll put a bearing in the bearing holder, and then I'll apply the weight on top of the bearing. This wheel race will spin about 800 RPMs. I'll let this run for 30 seconds, turn the machine off, and we'll take a look at the bearing. During the testing process, I will not touch any part of this device because in doing so, I'd mess with the test results and that's not what we want to do. Automatic transmission fluid is on the right, 10W30 is on the left. There is more scoring on the automatic transmission fluid bearing, so 10W30 does have better film strength than automatic transmission fluid. So I previously used this engine with canola oil and I let it set for six months. Today when I tried to start this engine, it was extremely stiff. Also the compression reading, I've done three different tests and it's really low, much lower than it was when I used the engine last. So it's gonna be interesting to see if automatic transmission fluid can help. Since we have the see-through cover, I can go ahead and provide a quick inside tour of this engine. So as you're looking through the hole, the first thing you're going to notice is where the connecting rod attaches to the crankshaft. Just left of the connecting rod is the camshaft. You'll notice that it's made of plastic. So just below the connecting rod is the splash system that circulates oil within the engine. So at the bottom of the screen, you can see a little bit of buildup inside this engine. We're going to see if the automatic transmission fluid can remove that.
So this is the automatic transmission fluid that I just drained out of this engine. So what I want to do now is run this through a coffee filter to see if there's any metal contamination or to see if there's any sludge. Who knows, maybe this caused damage or maybe this ended up removing some sludge. So what I'm gonna do is fold this filter over and I'm gonna use a paper towel to try to work out any sort of automatic transmission fluid that's left inside this filter so we can get a good look on the inside and see if there's any contamination. So what's interesting, I'm seeing some metal flakes inside this filter, which means that either automatic transmission fluid caused the damage or else automatic transmission fluid flushed out some metal flakes that were inside the engine to begin with. So the fluid on the right is the used automatic transmission fluid. The fluid on the left is the new stuff. So what I'm gonna do now is test to see if it's lost its film strength. So the bearing on the right is the used automatic transmission fluid. The bearing on the left is the new stuff. And as you can see, there isn't any difference regarding the scoring. So the exact same spot inside the crankcase does seem to be a little bit cleaner than before using automatic transmission fluid. So we've used the same engine in the past to test different oil products. And afterwards, we look at how much buildup has taken place inside the combustion chamber because there's always a certain amount of blow-by and there's a certain amount of oil that's gonna make it into the combustion chamber. So what I'm interested to see is what the combustion chamber looks like after automatic transmission fluid has been used in the crankcase to see if there's extra buildup or about the same. Compared to having regular motor oil in the crankcase, Automatic transmission fluid seems to have left less carbon buildup on this piston. However, there's still about the same amount of carbon buildup around the exhaust valve and around the intake valve. So if you used automatic transmission fluid to free up a stuck lifter or as a crankcase cleaner, I'd like to hear your comments on that. Have you had any sort of negative or positive experience? Anyway, it was quite interesting today to see the results. I had an engine that was pretty gummed up from the canola oil, so it was a very interesting test case. I did three compression readings before using the automatic transmission fluid and three readings afterwards, and the improvement was quite significant. However, I'm not so sure that the automatic transmission fluid did anything that a good detergent motor oil couldn't have done. I think they both would have achieved the same results. There was also some metal flake inside this engine. I don't think that came from the automatic transmission fluid, but I can't prove it. The lubricity test showed that the lubricity of automatic transmission fluid is a little bit less than 10W30 oil. However, it did not lose its lubricity after one hour of use. Finally, would I recommend you do this to your vehicle? I would definitely not. It's meant to go in a transmission, not inside the engine. And I never like to recommend things that could cause potential damage. Anyway, as usual, I really appreciate the comments. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care, and I look forward to seeing you next time.